Hey everyone. Welcome, you are early. We'll get started right at the top of the hour. Hey Lexica. Annyeonghaseyo. I've got my notebook and pen, coffees and tangerines. Interesting combination, coffee and tangerines. <laughs> and a cat by my side. Very interesting con <laughs> combination. Hey everyone. Welcome, welcome. How's everyone doing? It's been a while. I didn't see you last uh, last Sunday, right? We didn't have a live stream last Sunday. We will though next Sunday. Um. So uh, everyone, welcome to the stream. If you're just coming in, we'll start right at the top of the hour. If you would like, while you're waiting, you can check out the worksheet for today's live stream. There are like 17 additional examples. This topic we're going to be doing today is gigantic. It's ginormous. It's humongous. It's whatever other word that means really big. There are many uses to the form we're doing. There are, let's see, three major sections we're going to be covering today, just on Tunzi. And then a fourth section where I'm going to mention Tunzi and then compare it with another form, Ina, which you may have already learned. Hopefully, you've already seen it before. Even if you haven't mastered it, you should be kind of familiar with it. Um, this topic today is so big that I was worried I could fit it into a live stream. So I, I did my best to cut down the number of examples. That way, we can have plenty of time for you know uh, questions and uh, I can give you plenty of examples, but not be overwhelmed. So all of the extra examples go into the worksheet. So there are so many in there. Make sure to check it out. I really think it, it's hard to get a good grasp of a concept by only seeing it used like two or three times. And unfortunately, the topics we're going to be doing today, the different versions of Tunji, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sentences, only eight sentences. Now these aren't short, but eight full sentences can fit in this lesson. And even at that, I'm not confident I'm going to finish on time. So I'm just letting you know, get the worksheet <laughs> if you really want to understand this form more, but all the instruction is going to be here in the live stream. I think I just heard my, I think I, I, I think I got a package. Hold on, let me, let me check something for a second. Never mind. <laughs> I'm way, I ordered some, uh, hold on, let me, let me double check. I ordered some new business cards. I haven't gotten business cards in a while. And uh, they're supposed to be delivered today. So I heard the doorbell ring and I thought, maybe it's the business cards. But uh, no, it's, it wasn't. It was uh, someone else. It's got a package in the, in the beach. Welcome. Hello from Norway. Hello from Europe. South Africa. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying in the chat. Please use English <laughs> or Korean. That way we can understand. I can't read any of that. Uh, Kingu says, 안녕하세요. Welcome. Carrie Smith also says, 안녕하세요. Bonnie, 안녕하세요, 여러분. Welcome. Package. Well, there, there are a bunch of ways you could say it. If you're talking about like a uh, like a package in the mail, that's typically tekbe. Tekbe is like delivery. Uh, there are other ways you can you can specify types of packages, but uh, that's that's the most basic one. I can actually write that down. Tekbe. So tekbe is just a general package, but you will hear other words. For package, you know, if you're talking about like a package deal or like packages of stuff, you could call it a package, just like in English. 
Uh, if you're referring to like business packages, they have like for small packages, you can call them a, uh, why am I just having a, a brain fart now? Hold on one second. I got them. I got my new business cards. <gasps> I can't, I don't want to show the package. It has my address written really big on it. <laughs> Let me check this out. Oh. Hold on. Oh, yo, oh. Oh, I got two boxes, two boxes like this. Two big boxes like this. Check it out. Oh. oh, they're all stuck together. Hold on, I gotta pull one out. I gotta see one. I gotta see one right now. Right now! Her. Come out! Her. Come out! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh! Okay, so, the other business cards I was using, you may have gotten one if you've met me in Korea before. Um, I designed it in, not this, but I, the original ones. I designed them in PowerPoint. <laughs> In like 2017 or 2018, I designed them in PowerPoint just really quick because I didn't have a business card to give out. And um, it's always bothered me because the size has been wrong and like they didn't look too nice. So I, I made some new ones. I, I actually spent, I, I wish I, I want to say I had them professionally designed, but I was the professional who designed it. So I professionally designed it. You can't see them too well. You kind of see it. It's blurry. I don't want to refocus. Like, so okay. I can't, if I refocus, you won't be able to see anything, but let me, let me try it. See if I can refocus on here. It's dark, so I apologize. You can't really see it. So I got, I got a new one now. It's dark, like I said. The lights are not angled this way. And then the other side for English speakers. Got the same thing in English. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. Hold on, I got to refocus again now. Um, so yeah, if you run into me in Korea, I always carry these around. I still have about 60 or 70 of the older ones. But if you run into me in Korea, make sure to ask for one and I will give you one. Oh, those look nice. Nice. Cool. I'm happy about that. I was waiting for those for a long time. <laughs> totally ignored the chat. While I was looking at those, hold on, let me, let me go back here. Okay, did I miss anything? Did I miss anything in chat while I was showing those off? Sopo, yes, sorry. Sopo was the word I was trying to think of. Sopo was like for a small package. I was like, I know it's so, and then right then the door, <laughs> I was thinking of the doorbell. Yes, cool, cool. Send you one in stamp mail. I, I'm not mailing these out. Uh, they would cost they would cost more in postage than I spent to print them. I think each one of these is like maybe 20 cents or so. They're not cheap. they're not cheap. But you need business cards. Like when I do my inter my street interviews, I'm going to be doing many street interviews this time in Korea, and uh, you got to give them a card. You know, it, you're not just some random guy interviewing them with a the camera. You're a professional YouTuber. She's like, yes, nice to meet you. Here's my card. Yes, it looks like a real business card. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yes, I would love to be in your video. So that, that's how it works. Then they're like, look at the card the whole time and QR code and they scan it. Okay. Yeah, if you have any inner uh, requests for interviews you'd like to see me do, if there's any interview you'd like to see, send me a message. It can be through Discord. Let me know what, what types of topics you would like me to ask Korean people during my trip this time, because I'm going to be doing many more interviews. I'm going to be staying near the place, like a little closer to the center of Seoul. So a little closer than I normally stay. And that will give me some more opportunities to film interviews. So I'm planning on filming at least, I don't know, let's just say, let's just say five, five interview videos. I don't know. 
Uh, okay. We still have a bit of time. So any other questions? I'm not going to start early. We'll get started right at the top of the hour. Yoon Taeyeol, Jeon Hangukin, Ye. I don't think you are, but I like. But I like your positivity. <laughs> it's good that you're practicing Korean. Their favorite historical Korean person. Well, I can. I think I've actually already asked that question. Yeah, I already asked that question before. And the answer is very easy. It's uh, one of two people. Sejong Daewang. So King Sejong. Or Lee Sun Shin. So Admiral E. It's those two. And if you, have, if you ask them to pick their favorite, it's going to be King Sejong. This is not my guess. This is the answer. This is what people will tell you. Now, if you tell, if you want to get a more interesting answer, you'll have to say, tell me your favorite Korean historical person, except Lee Sun Shin or Sejong Daewang, and then you'll get some more interesting answers, but you're still going to get, you, you're probably still going to, going to get some of the kings first. Like you might get some of the early king, like Gojo Sun, or you might get like, uh, uh, I believe Son Dog Yeowang or something because they made a drama about her, like one of the Shila queens. You might get some people like that. So. I'll save you, I'll save you the effort of watching that video. I can tell you that's the answer. Hey, Paulina! Paulina, Carolina! Hold on, I gotta convert this for, to USD. <laughs> because I have no idea. It's about like $7, awesome! Polish? Zl Zloty, that's right, Polish. Paulina, thank you so much. Can I give you uh, seven dabs? Appreciate it. I uh, really do appreciate all your donations. They, they go to a good place right into my pocket. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they go into equipment that you see. They go into my trips to travel to Korea, flying there and staying there and filming and everything like that. Uh, Aniki asks, how many Hansa do you know approximately? Reading? I can read most of the common 2000. So that's reading. Like I can identify them or I can know like, oh, it's, I know that hansa, I know what it means, like that. Writing is going to be only a few hundred at best. I just don't practice writing them. And I haven't since I used to study Japanese before Korean. So at least, you know, over a decade or so ago, I haven't practiced writing any. But reading is a little bit different. And that's, if you just live in Korea, you'll learn a lot of them anyway. You'll see them printed here and there. And even if you can't recognize exactly the character, you can know... Like, oh, there's a character kind of looks like this, and it has this sound, and it has this meaning. So, yeah. Uh, I s well, we'll see. <laughs> I, still, I still doubt that he's a Korean because of the spacing. You, you're not going to see, you're not going to see Korean space like that. The hardest hunter for you to remember, well, I forgot. Okay, you would want to say, So like doing a live. Nice. Lesha Thompson, nice, nice. How about asking people their favorite hunter? <laughs> um, Koreans don't have a passion for hunter like you might be thinking. If you ask them their favorite hanja, they might say, I don't know very much hanja. And if I ask older people their favorite hanja, they might either give you their name, if they know it. It's, it's not... The, they, it might be a better question to ask them their favorite Korean word. But hanja isn't something that a lot of people have a passion about. Now, some people do. I do a little bit. But generally in Korea, people aren't very passionate about Hanja, but they are a bit passionate about their writing system, Hangul. So if you ask them their favorite Hangul word, you might get an answer like, oh, I like this word, it looks pretty. But, but Hanja, I don't think you would get that, at least not in Korea. Perhaps in uh, Japan you would, or maybe in China. Lindsay Glenn asks, how much Japanese do you know, Billy? Do you have a mean can you have a meaningful, <laughs> meaningful is where I would say no. Can you have a conversation in Japanese? Sure. I got up to about an intermediate level at the time. And while I forgot most of the speaking, I still understand and read quite a bit. 
So let's just say intermediate, but meaningful, meaningful would have to be a higher level than that. So I would say no. It's enough to travel. It's enough to, you know, keep up with my friends who sometimes send me messages in Japanese and then reply to them in English. Samantha. Hey, Samantha. Thank you so much. Let me give you 20 dabs, if that's okay. No time to say no, I'm doing them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> All right, thank you, Samantha. Uh, one minute before I'll start the lesson. So if everyone's wondering, why is this guy just, just dabbing and talking about random stuff? We'll get started with the lesson in just a minute. Lexica says, uh, besides Teju and Seoul, where would the interview people recommend that visitors go? Oh, I did ask that, actually. Sorry, my nose is a little itchy. I did ask that, I think... I think last time. You might want to check my recent interviews from the uh, last time that I did them. One of the questions was for where do you recommend people travel? Um, a lot of people recommended Teju. It was either the last set or the set before that, but I've done that before. A lot, yeah, a lot of people say Busan, a lot of people say Teju. Um, but, you know, it'll depend on what you want. Like for first time travelers, I personally recommend just staying in Seoul. If you've never been to Korea before, you're going to have the best possible trip by just staying in Seoul. The reason is there's the most stuff to do there. Not that it's the best city or the best place, but it's the best place for a first time tourist You'll get the most out of it. You'll have the best time. If you've been to Korea many times and you want something different, then we could talk about lots of other places you could go to that would be more fun. Hey, Dimitri. Thank you, Dimitri. Dimitri. I totally just like <laughs> wrote it all weird. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to rewrite that part. I couldn't even read my own writing there. Let me give you five dabs, Dimitri. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll start the lesson. Let me just read any quick comments. Would you use native Korean or Sino-Korean numbers to count dabs? You would use, uh, I would use pure Korean numbers. <laughs> You'll typically use um, isam and all that when you're just counting numbers by themselves with no context. Like what are the numbers in Korean? Most of the time you're going to hear ir, is, ham, ta, or like that. But when you're counting something, it's going to be with pure Korean. Now, this is, this is not a rule. You can do either. But um, <clears throat> for example, when you're taking a photo, one, three, two, one, you're counting something. In fact, they don't do three, two, one. They do one, two, three. Hana, two, set. Whenever you're counting, it's always going to be, not always, but preferred pure Korean. And when you're just saying numbers, it's going to be uh, Sino-Korean. This is like more of an advanced tip because if you mix it around, no one's going to care. They'll just think, huh, I guess they're still learning Korean, but it doesn't sound wrong and it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, Amaris says, I enter the stream to see Billy doing dabs. Yeah, it's it's this way. Whenever I get a donation, we, we you get to see me me dabbing. Uh, maybe if I get large donations enough, we'll do a, uh, I'll do a dance cover. I'll say that. I don't know what the goal will be, but uh, if we ever get like, you know, a stream where it's just, just donation, 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 I don't, whatever goal we set, then maybe we'll do a, a stream for like a, a, a dance cover. I'm warning you though, I do not dance. <laughs> my, my younger brother though does dance. So maybe, maybe, maybe I could just have him like wear my clothes and then use AI to like switch my face with, or his face with my face and then he can dance. I'll think about it. Okay, anyway, um, someone said, how are you able to stay so much in Korea documents wise? Uh, no, I'm in Korea a, a third of every year. So I'm in Korea a lot more than you might think. Uh, I'm just not always, when I'm in Korea, I just don't do streaming that often. I might do like one stream per month in Korea. To, people don't usually know exactly when I'm in Korea or when I'm in the States. But I'm in Korea at least about a third a year of every single year. And I'm going to be going there again this summer for May, June, and July. 
and then again later in the year for another for another month or so. Okay, so let's get started with the lesson. The prerequisites for this lesson are not pick big. Um, you want to be kind of familiar with these grammar forms first. If you're not, if you've never seen these before, you're still okay. But don't ask the question then, what's the difference between this form and this form if you've never learned this before? So that's, that's the only reason I wrote this prerequisite out is because if you've learned these forms, you might, and you've already watched my lessons and you've learned them, then you're going to wonder, well, what's the difference between this form and that form? So that's okay if you wanna ask it if you've learned it. If you haven't learned it though before, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay, so it's a prerequisite in the sense that if you have that question, it's a prerequisite. If you don't care, it's not a prerequisite. We're not going to be using that form in today's live stream at all. Until the very end, we have a little section for advanced learners, which I will mention several advanced topics related to that. So that, that's when you'll need to know it. Okay. The form we're going to be using today is very easy to conjugate. You just take a verb stem, any verb. So you take hada, for example, and you cut off the ta, and now you have the verb stem, ha. Then you attach tin and optionally ji, tinji. Most of the time it'll be tinji, but you can also use tin. They have the same meaning. Um, yeah, that's that's all that's all you need to know about how to conjugate it. <clears throat> Any questions? Let's <laughs> check the uh, comments for a second. Samantha says, "Let's get Billy to dance." Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I don't know what would be a good monetary goal that if I got this much this many donations during a single live stream that I would do a uh, a dance cover. What would be a goal for that? I don't know. Discuss it amongst yourselves. <laughs> or talk about it in the Discord. Uh, speaking of which, someone said $3. <laughs> $3. Yeah, um, I, I'm not gonna destroy my channel for, for that low. <laughs> as soon as everyone unsubscribes when they see the notification that it's just like dance covering dynamite or something. Okay, um, 500, that could be, that could be a, a realistic goal. It's not too out of, it's not too unreachable. I have once gotten somewhere in the $300 range for a single live stream. That's happened once. So 500 is not impossible. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe we can do that. Maybe 500, $500 in a single live stream. Doesn't have to be today, just any, any single live stream. If it goes over that amount, then we can get a dance cover selected by, um, well, I guess I could have the members give me the options and then everyone can vote on it. Maybe something like that. Okay. The way this form works is you're actually going to use it twice. So you'll take a verb and then you'll take usually the opposite meaning or something that has a different meaning and you'll attach it afterwards. For example, if you're using hada, you could get something like Hadenji an hadenji. Or if you're using the verb ita to exist, itenji optenji. So you'll use something that's kind of the opposite. Or maybe here, instead of an hadenji, you can have hadenji but hadenji. Or If you're using a command, hadenji, maldenji. Malda meaning to not do something or to stop doing something. Like when you tell someone don't do something. Haji mayo, haji maseyo. Hadenji, maldenji. So this is just how it's used. So you use it twice. There's one more thing you also need to know about this. And that is about the verb stem. Now, you can just use the verb stem like this. Nothing, you don't have to do anything to it. There's no exceptions. But if you want, optionally, you could use a past tense verb stem.
I'm just writing this down. I haven't told you what this for means yet. I just want to make sure the conjugation and usage is clear first. Okay. Um, you could optionally use it with past tense. However, you couldn't use it with a future tense verb stem. So you could say something like, past tense hada, hetunji, motetunji, isotunji, opsotunji, hetunji. Well, actually, that would be for command. You wouldn't use it for that because you're not saying. Anyway, so you could use it with a past tense, but only if you need to emphasize it. Most of the time, you don't. Most of the time, you just use a regular verb stem. But you cannot use a future tense verb stem. So you could not say hagetunji or anything like that. OK, so that's everything you need to know about how this form is used and how to conjugate it. I'm going to leave this up for just a few seconds, and then I'm going to tell you what it means. Someone said, um, the choreography on J-Hope's latest is mellow enough you could probably do it. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Wonder Girls, a classic. Wonder Girls? Yeah, that's a pretty classic. Long time ago. I remember when Wonder Girls were popular. That was like 2007, 2008, 2009, around then. <laughs> and that was it. I, I guess they're still active in some way, but after like 2009, I'd never heard anything else. Yes, yes. I'm just reading some comments. Mimi says, is this grammar connected to the called in? Nope. Called in is not. Orange caramel. Yeah. Uh, bubble pop or you go girl. <laughs> you go girl is kind of hard. That would be hard to dance. Okay. So what this for means is it can translate either to weather or regardless. But I don't want you to only think of this form in terms of English translation, because there are other ways you could translate weather from English. For example, we have the nunzi form, remember? Or we have other forms like whether you do that or not, make sure to do something else. Or There are other ways you can translate weather in English into Korean. So I don't want you to think of it in terms of English so much. What this form is used for is to show that there are multiple options to choose from. And that any of those choices is fine. In fact, you don't care. There are multiple things and any choice is fine. So whether you do that or you do that, it doesn't matter is what it implies. Regardless of whether you do something or do that or don't do that, or whether it's this or whether it's that, it doesn't matter. Any choice is fine. So that's what this form is used for. It's for expressing whether or regardless when any of the choices that you have is okay. You're not preferring one, you're just saying, Whatever, either that or that is okay. So, because of that, it tends to often get used to express things like, it doesn't matter where. Sorry, it doesn't matter. Well, it could be it doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter whether or regardless of whether. So, take a note of that. It doesn't matter whether or regardless of whether. That's the feeling that this form gives you. Is that any of them is okay. Like, you don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's all you need to know about the explanation of this form for now. There's, a, there's more to it though, but this is the first usage that we're focusing on today. And there are three main uses of this form. And the first one like this, I'll give you, okay, I'll give you, I'll spoil something for you. This sort of usage is the least common of all three that we're going to be doing today. 
So you, you should learn it because it's the foundation of this form. It's what this form means, but you're not going to need to use this yourself that much. I think it can sound a little bit, a little bit too emphatic, a little bit too strong most of the time. And uh, if you think about it in English, it might help you to understand why, but I'll show you an example. For example, if you're saying something like, uh, whether the house is far or whether it's close, I still have to go, I still have to drive there. Whether that, whether their house is close or whether it's far, I still have to drive there. Do we say that that much in English, even though it's perfect English, right? How else might you say something like that in English? I just want you to think about it because in Korean, it's kind of similar. It's fine to say, people do say it all the time, but it's the least used version of this form. And we'll see other ways you can express something kind of similar. Okay. Han says, how is it different from Ninji? Zero, zero relation. Ninji only translates as weather, but uh, I have a full live stream about Ninji or the Ji. Ji is for things that are unknown. So that's implying weather or something, I don't know. Weather something, do you know? Weather something, I want to find out. That sort of unknown Ji, not weather, I don't care. So unrelated, if that helps. Yeah, so whether it's here or there, I still have to go. Okay. How about wherever it is? Not whether, but wherever. Wherever it is, I have to go. And we'll talk about that next. So that's just one way. Um, that's kind of what you're going to be doing in Korean as well. But you still need to know this basic form. So I just want you to think about that a bit that this, this basic form of using it twice, one and then the other, like whether you do it or whether you don't, is not super common, but it's not awkward, just like it is in English. We don't use it all the time, but it's okay and it's good to know, but there are other ways we'll probably express the exact same thing most of the time. Okay, regardless of the distance, uh, you, there might be a different form to say that. We'll talk about the, the way that you can do it with this form in a second. Okay. Um, I want you to write this sentence. I have to go. Regardless of whether, or I have to go, whether it's far or close. Whether it's far or close, I have to go. How would you write that sentence? I, I don't want to give it to you. Just you figure it out. Hey, Zandria. I'm late, but I'll catch the abridged too. Nice, Zandria. You're actually not very late. You didn't miss anything. You just need to know you add, uh, co uh, sorry, not Colton. Someone else had asked about that. You ask, you add tin or tinzi most of the time tinzi after a verb, and then you, sorry, verb stem, and then you repeat it with its opposite or something that means something different, like hadinzi an hadinzi or hadinzi both hadinzi or inen uh, itinzi. Did I say inenzi? Sorry. Again, reading the comments and incorporating that in my brain. Uh, tinzi. So itinzi optinzi an. So hadenzi or an hadenzi or mut. So hadenzi mut hadenzi. Sorry, horrible explanation. Just rewatch the abridged. You'll get more. But that's pretty much it. There, there aren't any exceptions for conjugating this one. Okay. So I want you to do this one. I have to go. Whether it's far or close, I have to go. Nice, Aniki. MJ Hammer has it even more perfecter. Well, actually, sorry, small small typo for kakap. So it's not kagap, but kakap. But yeah, you caught that. Okay. But yours was even more correcter, more correcterist, Lee, since you followed exactly what I had said in English. So I have to go regardless of whether it's far or close. 
Okay, let me check the others. Just reading them really quick. Oh yeah, for for far, it's molda. So you simply take the verb stem. You don't have to do anything to it. So you get mol tunji. That's it. I did see someone remove the lir, so perhaps they were thinking you have to remove it for conjugating, but no, just the verb stem. Oh, that was you, Riot. <laughs> I didn't read the person who wrote it. I just wrote the comment. Nice, Hannah JT. Um, blue candles. Again, uh, small typo. Oh, yeah, you caught it. Okay. <laughs> Yes, MJ Hammer, 뭘든지 가깝든지 꼭 가야 돼요. Perfect. Dimitri says, I learned the word 언제든지, and yes, we're going to be learning that. Don't worry. We're going to get there. That's, that's uh, usage two out of three. So usage one is the least common. Usage two is more common, and usage three is the most common way that you'll see this form used. Irregular verbs are my nightmare. Yeah, this one, fortunately, it just uses the verb stem. So nothing irregular here. Uh, f fairly easy to use. Okay, any other attempts? I'm going to give you the answer now. Although you could have written this a couple of different ways. So, whether it's far, whether it's close, So, up to this part, so I have to go. But, up to this part, we can already kind of assume the feeling of the sentence. Whether it's far, it doesn't matter. Or, whether it's far, that's okay is what the feeling of this sentence gives us. Even when we've only gotten up to here, we hear more than, we know, oh, the sentence has to imply that the speaker doesn't have a preference, that they're thinking it's okay. Doesn't matter. It's okay if it's far. It's okay if it's close. Whether it is close or far, doesn't matter. But the end of the sentence is, so whether it's far or close, it doesn't matter. I have to go is the nuance that we get. So even without this part of the sentence, we can tell the nuance is that it doesn't really matter or that it's okay. So I have to go regardless of whether it's far or close. Okay, next sentence. I want you to do this one too. This one's a little harder though. This one's a little harder. Okay. The end of the sentence and the end of many sentences that use this form like this is going is going to be 상관없어요 or 상관없다, some form of that. 상관없습니다 is okay too. So 상관없어요. It doesn't matter. Or like, I don't mind, I don't care. Not as, not as in like, I don't care at all, but like, yeah, it's okay. I don't mind, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter whether you do it now or do it later. It doesn't matter whether you do it now or you do it later. It doesn't matter if you do it now or you do it later, as The Rock would probably say. Go ahead and give it your best try. See, hope. I think I'm confusing myself, so I'll wait for your answer. Did you ask a question? I didn't see a question. Okay, go ahead and give it a try. So it doesn't matter whether you do it now or you do it later. Let's see, let's see who's gonna be first. Uh, our moon child, 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지 상관없어요. Our moon child wins. You win. You got it. <laughs> uh, but let's see who else. Okay, so um, let's check the uh, members first. Sophia has 
지금 하든지 이따 하든지 이따 is nice. That's nice too. So it's not necessarily later, later, but it's like, you know, in a bit. So later today. Perfect, Sophia. Hope. Uh, no, I was trying to answer the first one. I see, I see. Okay. And then MJ Hammer. 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지 상관없어요. Perfect, MJ Hammer. Perfect. Okay, now let's check the other sentences. Hannah JT, 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지. Yes, 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지. 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지. 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지. 지금 하든지 나... Okay, I'm, seeing... I'm just going to skim through them really quick. I'm not going to read them out loud. Awesome. Uh, Brenda, small typo. 안 보민. Should be 하든지, not 가든지. And 지금 하든지. Nice, nice. Baida, you need to use it with a verb. So you would need to say do it now. So hada for to do. So hadenzi would be what we want to say. Evan says, I usually can sort of follow along even as a beginner, but I also came in late. I'll read along. Okay. Yeah. Dinzi is like whether or regardless. And it shows that you don't have a preference. That it's, it's both cho either choice is okay. Not none of them is okay, but either is okay. 지금 하든지 나중에 하든지 상관없어요. Perfect hope. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'm impressed. I, I thought this was a little bit harder because you had to use both of those forms, but... It doesn't matter. Whether or regardless of whether you do it, you do it now, or regardless of whether you do it later, doesn't matter whether you do it now or do it later. As soon as we get to this part of the sentence, we already know the speaker's feeling. The nuance of the sentence is already finished. So you don't have to hear a whole sentence to get what this feeling is. And the feeling is whether you do it now. That's the weather I mean. Someone had asked before, what's the difference between ninzi? Ninzi only translates as weather. But if you hear ninzi, the feeling would be different. Again, this isn't part of the lesson. It's just because someone asked. Ninzi would be the feeling once you get to ninzi. Tsigam ha ninzi means, oh, I don't know. That's the feeling you get instantly. That's not the feeling you get with tunzi. It's an unrelated form. Tsigam hadin or tsigam hadinzi gives you the feeling right away of, I don't care, or it's okay, or that's fine. So whether you do it now or you do it later, and then you can add this at the end. Commonly used sangwan opta. If you don't know how to finish a sentence that has tunzi, just finish it with sangwan opta and conjugate it. Sangwan opsoyo, it doesn't matter. Tsigam hadinzi, najungi hadinzi, sangwan opsoyo. Doesn't matter whether you do it now or do it later. Okay. So, this was the first way to use this form, but it's actually not the most common way that this form gets used. It's good to know it, but you can kind of think about it in terms of English. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter whether you do it now or do it later. How natural does this sound in English? It sounds okay, right? But if you're a native English speaker, you probably might think it sounds also a little bit bookish. It sounds a little bit emphatic. Like, why do you need to say such a long sentence? It doesn't matter whether you do it now or do it later. You might just say, I don't care when you do it, right? Or you can do it whenever. Or, uh, yeah, something like that might be a little more natural sounding, but it's not awkward. It's not unnatural. It's just a little bit less common. So it's the same with Korean. You'll see this form used with the double form when you're trying to emphasize something. Um, you could say, you know, 뭘든지, 가깝든지, you can say 지금 하든지, 안 하든지, 지금 하든지, 못 하든지, like whether you, you do it now or you can't do it. You can use it with any sort of these opposing meanings, but most of the time you're not going to see it used that way. Most of the time, you're going to see it used. Actually, we'll start with this. More often, you're going to see it used like this.
You'll often see this form used after any question word. So question words can be used on their own with this form without having a second verb after them. When you use this form with a verb, we had to have like hadenzi an hadenzi or something like that. But with a question word, you don't. You can use it all by itself in a sentence without having to repeat it. And a question word would be something like what, where, when, anything like that is a question word. Let me give you some common examples. Um, yeah. Modenji or Moshidenji. Moshidenji or Bodenji. You might just hear Boden or Moshiden. Both of these are okay. Moshidenji is a little bit more formal sounding, a little bit less common, but it has the same meaning. And this means what? So what? Ever. Whatever. As in, whatever it is, it's okay, or it doesn't matter, or it's fine, or that's good. 상관없어요. 뭐든지 괜찮아요. 뭐든지 상관없어요. Okay. These ones you just want to write down because these are just vocabulary words. Odi, where, odi denji, wherever. Dugu, who, dugu denji, who ever. Note, you would never say du ga denji because nu ga is actually dugu plus ka. So that would be a different form. Okay, and one more. There are actually a few more, but let's just do one more. Oops, let me rewrite that. I wrote it all weird because I wrote the wrong letter. 언제, when, 언제든지, 언제든지, whenever. Okay, there are a couple more. But that's pretty, that's pretty good for the basics. All right, so there are two things we're going to be talking about. The first one is just these words, and then we're going to go a little bit further, and I'll show you the most common way this form gets used. So first of all, then, um, whoever, okay, let, let me actually give you, give you an example. So those words, I think you should just write down and memorize separately, but uh, let me give you an example. Okay. I want you to translate the sentence to English because it's important for something I'm going to tell you. Hey, Paulina. Paulina, welcome. Thank you for joining our newest member. Yay, I was able to renew my membership. I lost it somehow due to my... Oh, yeah, it's been a while. I forgot you used to be a member because I hadn't seen your name in green. We leave out the or later a lot. You don't have you don't have to do it now. Yeah. You could say it like that. Okay. Notice. Okay, well, I'm, this is interesting. Yes. Someone said everyone can learn. It's not everyone. It's not, we're not saying everyone. That would be every person that has a different meaning than ever. Whatever. That sort of meaning. You know, in this case, dugu uh, denji would be whoever, right? So, dugu, who, dugu denji, whoever. But then, why wouldn't you want to translate this as hangu gonen? Oh, I got a donation. Oh, no, no, Zandria. Zandria, thank you as well for joining. Well, I'm let the board finish flashing, then I'm going to start my explanation. <laughs> 
Yes. Yes. Many of your translations have anyone, and that is perfect. Please don't think you did anything wrong. Okay. 한국어는 누구든지 배울 수 있어요. 한국어는 so Korean 배울 수 있어요. Can learn. So 누구든지 누구 is who 누구든지 whoever. So literally, this sentence is 한국어는 누구든지 배울 수 있어요. So Korean, whoever can learn it. So whoever can learn Korean. But how awkward does that sound? But the meaning is there. Korean, whoever it is, whoever it is, can learn Korean. The reason why it is whoever it is is because actually in here, invisible is the verb ida, which means to be. So whoever it is, there's that is, to be meaning in there. If you're curious, that's more of an advanced note. So whoever it is can learn Korean. But when you're translating this to English, whoever only works in certain uses. You might say, I don't mind whoever comes. But if you're saying whoever does something, we wouldn't say whoever in that situation. We would say anyone, right? Anybody is a more natural way to say it. So when you translate these question words that have tunzi, most of the time, any is going to be a better translation. So, 무엇이든지 or 뭐든지, not whatever, but it could also be anything. 어디든지, not just wherever, but anywhere. 누구든지, not just whoever, but anyone. And then finally, the other one, 언제든지, not just whenever, but anytime. And that's just based on the context. So, most of the time, you're going to actually want to translate these as any something, so anyone. But this is not the same as saying amu, if you're curious. Uh, we could talk about that a little bit later in the lesson, exactly why. But amu is not the same meaning as this. We'll talk about that a bit. Okay. Just checking here. Okay, let me do another example. Why is Korean at the beginning? Oh yeah, so Korean is something that anyone can learn, is basically what it's saying. Anyone can learn Korean. You could say, 누구든지 한국어를 배울 수 있어요. Now you're saying, whoever can learn Korean, versus anyone can learn Korean. It's just a different nuance. That just comes with the nuance from the topic marker. Especially when this sentence has no other context, you're just suddenly throwing out Korean. 한국어는, like when we're talking about Korean, let's talk about Korean for a second. Anyone can learn it. So that sounds more natural than just saying, 누구든지 한국어, 한국어 배울 수 있어요. Suddenly, without any context, anyone can learn Korean. And they might be like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about, like, are we going to have a conversation about Korean now? There's no context. So, with, so it's kind of giving some context. Like, hey, we're going to talk about Korean here. As for Korean, Koreans are topic. Anyone can learn it. That's just the nuance difference. And it's a little bit more natural when there's no context here. In a conversation, you're already talking about Korean, blah, 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 blah. Then you can say, 누구든지 한국어를 배울 수 있어요. 누구든지 한국어 배울 수 있죠. You can say it like that if you're already in the context. But without context, it's better to set up some sort of context first. Okay. Um... I want you to translate this sentence. Call me whenever. Call me whenever. Or call me anytime. As I said, it could be either translation. Call me or call anytime. Give me a call anytime. Do your best. Yeah, it's not. So while you're, while you're doing that, I'll talk about Amu a little bit. Um, Amu is literally for any. So you wouldn't say it's not, it doesn't imply that it doesn't matter. It doesn't imply that any choice is okay. You're simply saying anyone, like anyone. Well, well we can talk about that in a little bit more detail. I do have one note here about Amu, but it's toward the end.
Okay, let's see. Paulina, onze denji yola. Oh, typo, typo. It's yon, yon lak. Pronounced as yola lak, as you have it written. Yola lak juseo. Onze denji chonai juseo. Nice MJ Hammer. And hope is onze denji chonai seo. Perfect. Sophia, onze denji yola ke puseo. Very good. I like that. Okay, now let's skim through the other replies really quick. Nice, Mimi, you put the yo in quotes as well. I mean, uh, parentheses. Let's see here. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, another thing is you would be able to use amu with to, but you wouldn't use this. Like you could say, amu to, an hesoyo. Nobody did it. Didn't know, so nobody did it. Literally, not even anyone did it. But you wouldn't say, "Dugudenji uh, anesoyo." Like, whoever didn't do it, it doesn't make any sense because whoever already implies like it's fine, it's okay. So like, whoever it's fine, it's okay. They didn't do it. It it like kind of conflicts. It doesn't make any sense. So there are situations when they translate similarly into English, but their forms have no relation because, as you can tell, the form this one tunji implies choices. Amu doesn't have to do with that. Hey, Kaylee. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining, Kaylee. Now your name's in green. Green is, uh, I see the green right away when I look at the chat. So I usually read their replies out first and then I go for everyone else. Okay. So call me. Onze. When? Ever. Call me whenever. Or call me anytime, you could say. But literally, it's like call me whenever. Or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Chona haseyo. Give me a call. Onze denji chona haseyo. So call me whenever. Call me anytime. Okay. Those words, though, are pretty simple to use because you just translate them. Bodenji, whatever, oldidenji, you know, wherever, like that. You just translate them and you put them in a sentence and you're done. The most common usage of the tunji form is, however, with a question word, but a little bit different. I said that when you use a question verb, sorry, I said that when you use a question word together with tunzi, you don't use a second verb, right? You don't have to duplicate it like you do with just hadunzi, anhadunzi. But you can also use a verb stem with tunzi without a second verb if you're using a question word in the sentence. So I'll say that again. You can have something like hadunzi. And then you need anhadenji or butadenji or something like that. But if you're using a question word with tunji, you don't have to. You can just say, onjedenji chonahaseyo. Onjedenji chonahaseyo. So give me a call anytime. We didn't have to add in a second form. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. But when you attach another verb, you still don't have to add a second verb into there. You can use it as question word. Verb stem, tunzi, and then finish the sentence. And I'll show you what that looks like. You might be able to actually guess in English. Okay, let me give you a sentence. I want you to try to, to see if you can figure out what I'm getting at. It doesn't matter if Charsu does it or if Yongi does it. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether Charsu does it or Yongi does it. So this would be an example of the first type of sentence, the first type of grammar that we were learning. Charsu ga hadun, Yongi ga hadun, sangwon opsoyo. Right? Whether Charsu does it or Yongi does it, it doesn't matter. How would you say this though more simply in English? Can you think of a way you might say this more simply? Just write in chat. Think about it. Can you think of a way that you might say that same type of thing 
Same general sentence that's more natural, a little bit faster in English. I want to see if it clicks with anyone, what I'm getting at, because that's exactly what you do. Yeah, Samantha, whoever does it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whoever does it or it doesn't matter who does it, right? I just gave away the answer, but you already got it. So <laughs> it doesn't matter if he does it or not. Oh, that would still be our first form. So it doesn't matter if he does it or not. That would, you could say it, it's fine, but you might want to just say, MJ Hammer got it, also Hope got it. It doesn't matter who does it. It doesn't matter who. In this case, you would say Nuga because it's Nugu Ga. And then you can finish the sentence. How well, I'm sorry, or whatever. Nuga, so Nugu Ga, Nuga Hadenji, Nuga Hadenji, Sangwal of Soya. Doesn't matter who does it. Oh, that actually is my sentence. <laughs> I just came to my sentence without even uh, intentionally do, trying to do that. I look down and that is the first example. It doesn't matter whoever does it. Duga, so dugu, ga, duga, hadunji, sangwan opsoyo. So it doesn't matter whoever or just it doesn't matter who does it. Duga hadunji. Who does it? We already get the feeling of this choice is acceptable. It doesn't matter. Even before we get to here, 누가 하든지 상관없어요. It doesn't matter who does it. And this sort of usage with a question word and a verb with 든지 is the most common way you're going to see the 든지 form used. And that's why I prepared four example sentences of this and the other ones only have two each. Okay, I'm going to leave this up for a second. Uh, Maddie, 누구든지 by itself is whoever. Literally, though, I should probably clarify this for you, because since you asked that question for Maddie, 누구든지 literally is 누구 이든지, 누구 이다. So it is whoever. So if you say 누구든지, you're saying whoever it is. So you couldn't end that sentence by saying 누구든지 하면, because what you're saying is 누구 이든지. So no matter who it is, if you do it, is what you're saying. And it's it sounds like you're repeating something. It would be unnecessary. So like they'll make they'll understand what you're trying to say, but it would sound awkward. So you'd say duga hadunji, regardless of whoever does it. You could say duga hedu, duga hedu, even if someone does it, but that's a different meaning. Even if someone does it, versus it doesn't matter who does it. Okay. Do you have a video explaining those hidden ida verbs? Nope. I'm just telling you, that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff you're not going to get explanations on in Korean because you don't really need it until you need it. If you ask me a specific question, uh, I will tell you the, the hidden meaning and stuff. But otherwise, there's not, a, there's not really a reason to have to go out of your way to learn every, you know, tiny detail about every form I'll teach just because it's, it's not a good use of time to have to stress about that. The most important thing is to be able to use these forms, right? Okay. And once you get the feeling of this form, you won't even need to need you won't even need to know that kind of thing in the first place. You don't have to know that nugudenji actually has an idenji or moshidenji, whatever those are. You don't even have to know that there's an ida hiding in there because the feeling of it being it's okay, it doesn't matter, that feeling will make it impossible for you to make other sentences where that wouldn't make sense if that if that helps. So it's not something that's really necessary. Okay. I want you to write this sentence, but I'm going to give you the end of it. This is a long sentence. I want you to write it yourself. I can eat any food right now. So we have, I can eat, right, right, so I right now, I can eat anything, I can eat all of it. So I can eat 
any or whatever food, whatever kind of food right now. And the, I might want to give you a word that, to help you with this. Okay. Um, whatever kind of food it is, whatever kind of food. So you're going to need to use this word. Oton. Oton is what kind of. So I'm giving you this. I'm, I wanted to give you less, but I realized it might cause you to give to pull up a different word if I don't tell you what I'm looking for. Whatever kind of food it is, I can eat all of it. I can eat anything right now. I want you to write that for yourself and I want you to think about it. So I can eat whatever, any kind of food it is. No matter what kind of food it is, I can eat any food right now. Oh, take care, Zandria. Yes, Hannah JT, you got it perfect. You didn't need that question? That's the exact answer. Okay, you might, if you didn't get that. <clears throat> oh, Hope, you don't want to just write this. There, it's missing this part. So you need this, uh, the underlined part needs to be filled in. If you didn't get it, just think for a bit. It's okay. It's your first time trying a long sentence like this with a new word in, used in this context that you haven't seen yet. So what we're trying to say again is, <clears throat> me, right now, I can eat anything regardless of what kind of food it is. Ida. You're going to want to use Ida here. I don't want to tell you the answer, so I'd rather you try it again. Um, so if you wrote 어떤 든지, that wouldn't work. It's going to be what kind of food. So this is the usage where you have a question word or some sort of, you know, description word like that. Um, before a, na before a verb. In this case, the verb is ida. So a few people got it right, but that's okay. If you don't get it right, uh, like I said, it's, it's quite difficult to, to put all these together right now. 어떤 종류의 음식? Yeah, you can do what what category of food, but it sounds a little too fancy. Paulina, yes. Um, <clears throat> MJ, 어떤 음식 먹든지? Okay, okay, I see. That's not the verb you want to use, but your sentence makes perfect sense. No matter what kind of food I eat, I can eat all of it. So it's a little repetitive by having it in there twice. Um, but I see where you're going. It's not bad. I'll accept it. Uh, Paulina, yes. And we'll talk about that. Yes, hope. And if you didn't get that, don't worry about it. Feel free to ask me questions about that as well. Uh, MJ, 어떤 음식 이든지, since this is whatever kind of food it is, you wouldn't use 든지 simply after a noun. You can use it after question words, but you wouldn't use it after a noun. There's actually another reason for that. We don't need to go over it, but uh, uh, just use it with 이다 to be... to. That's the simple reason you need to know. Oto then okay, oto is a separate word if you're talking about oto ke, like oto hada or something like that. Uh, it wouldn't be used as oto because oto by itself is not a question word. And oton dinji wouldn't make sense either because oton is an adjective if we're getting technical. It has to be attached before a noun. So you couldn't have oton ieo. That wouldn't make sense. You can say oton something ieo is okay. In this case, oton umsik. What kind of food? So, 어떤 is what kind of. Okay. Again, if you, if you don't get this, don't, don't stress about it. It's actually quite a complicated topic because 
uh, it's, it's more of an intermediate level. But feel free to ask questions. And uh, I do want to help you get it, though. Literally, you could do that. But you wouldn't do that. You, you could say, So not regardless of how it is, you would have to have different context to use like that. You would use So no matter how it is. Or you might translate it as like anyway or some some way or somehow like that. Uh, if someone bought my book, would they recommend? Would I recommend trying to memorize all the vocabulary? Not right away. No, I would say keep it like write it down and have it as a reference so you can make your own sentences. But don't go out of your way to try memorizing every single word in it. It does have a lot of words that you need. You'll eventually need, but uh, it's more important that you can use them. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't tr stress about that. Okay, so I'm going to give you an answer. We'll talk about it. Tonin, Tigun. So I, right now, Oton umsigidenzi. Oton is what kind? So you might say, Oton yongha chuahaseo. What kind of movie do you like? What kind of? What kind of food do you like? So what kind of food? No matter what kind of food, or I should say, regardless of what kind of food it is. So any kind of food is how you might translate that. Regardless of what kind of food it is, ida, ta, all of it, mokta, to eat. I can eat anything. I can eat all of it. I can eat all of it regardless of what kind of food it is. What kind of food is it? So regardless of what kind of food it is, I can eat it all. So right now, I could just eat anything, no matter what it is. Okay, does that make sense? Checking the chat. Yeah. Um, don't think about it too much in terms of English because you'll find that so many things in Korean, especially when it comes to grammar, have the same translation in English without any context. Um, the feeling, though, again, when you see 어떤 음식이든지, a native Korean speaker is going to hear 이든지. They're going to hear this 든지, and their feeling is the speaker doesn't, it's like the speaker doesn't care. Like the speaker is not saying they prefer it. So whatever kind of food it is, 어떤 음식이든지, no matter, even if it's whatever, any kind of food, they know the ending is going to be 상관없어요. It doesn't matter. In this case, it is. It doesn't matter because 다 먹을 수 있어요. If it helps you understand this form better, every single time you see 든지, just insert 상관없어요 in your head. It doesn't matter. Even though it's not going to be the end of the sentence every time, like it's not here, it's okay to insert it because even if we translate it like that, we still get the right answer. So for me right now, no matter whatever kind of food it is, it doesn't matter. I can eat all of it, right? It still fits. You can still do that if that helps you to translate it. Okay. Someone asked tin or tinji. Yeah, that was explained at the very beginning of the lesson. You might have missed that. But you can say either 어떤 음식이든 or 어떤 음식이든지. It's the same meaning. Most of the time, though, you'll see 지. Is this the hidden 이다? The hidden 이다 would be right here. Yes, but it's not hidden here because we're actually saying whatever food it is, so it's not hidden. But in the question words, all the question words end with a consonant. So you don't see it. That's why it's hidden. That's why you get 모든지. But if you do have a exposed consonant, like what for what, then you get 모시든지. So 모시든지. Then you see it. Otherwise, it's it's hidden. And you can do that whenever 이다 or as well is uh, after a vowel. You won't see it. But uh, okay. 
That was a little hard. If you didn't get it, don't worry. Still have two more examples to try out. Okay, next one. I'm going to give you the end of the sentence again. Okay. Whatever color it is, they're all good. Patoyo. Whatever color. Whatever color. So this one is an intermediate sentence because in order to say whatever color, you're going to need to know how to say what color. So if you can't say what color, I'll tell you. But uh, don't, don't worry if you can't get it because if you don't know how to say what color is, is something, then you won't be able to make this sentence. Because what you're going to want to say is whatever color it is. So regardless of it is, whatever color or any, or not any, sorry, but what color it is. Regardless if it's what color is what you want to say. So you need to know how to say what color. Hey, Alita Baker. Thank you, Alita. This is a great man. Please appreciate him. I do appreciate myself. Oh, okay. You could say, okay, Olivia has a good attempt here. That's fine. It's not whatever color it is, but now you have what kind of color it is. So in some context, that could be okay. Maybe you're talking about categories of colors. Then you might want to say, 어떤 색깔이든지, no matter what kind of color it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't use 어떤, you would use... Oh, MJ Hammer, you need to have a what color. So you'll want to add the what. If you know the adjective for what, like a what something, I'm going to tell you. Busin. And then someone did get that. Um, Manu the Amazing. Maybe you are amazing, Manu. Busin sekari dun. So, okay, so small typo though. You'd want to say sekai with a double kyok there. But yes, busin would be what? Uh, Olne is okay too. Olne sekari dun. Like whichever color it is, is okay. Fine. Which is used when you're picking. And busin was just simply in general, like whatever it is, what it is. So you could say like whichever color it is among these options. That's okay too. Just a different nuance. Okay. Yes. Nice, JC. Riot X Van. Again, you could say Oton, but it just has a different meaning. It's like for a category. It doesn't mean what color. It means like what kind of color. So no matter what kind of color it is, it's all good, is what you're saying. And usually you wouldn't say that, like when you're saying not the kind of color, but you're saying whatever color it is. Nice, Paulina. Nice, Sophia. That works as well. Again, when you're selecting among something, you would use which. MJ Hammer, perfect. As well as Evan, Yeban. Just typo for sekar. For Evan, you can just change it to a double. Hope. Perfect. Nice, nice. If you're pra if you're picking paint and you have a list of options, then oton wouldn't make sense. It would be you could say olne if you have options, but uh, like I said, oton would be like we have glossy paint, we have matte paint, we have Sparkly paint. Like that. Like whatever type, whatever category. Most of the time, you're not going to need that though. You would say busin. If you're going to say color, it's spelled as sekai. But the kai is 100% optional. Busin sek. or I'm just going to leave it like that. So, busin means what? It's an adjective. So, in this case, busin segieyo. What color is it? Busin segida. It is. So, busin segiden. So, regardless of what color it is, sangwonopsoyo doesn't matter. In fact, tachwayo. They're all good. Busin segiden tachwayo. So, whatever color it is, they're all good. Or any color is good. They're all good, is what you're saying. 무슨 색이든 다 좋아요.
Okay. Oton Sekar could be the finish. It's just categories. I was just giving you an example of a category of, of color. Um, like if you're choosing between Crayola colors or like paint colors or uh, dyes, like then it might be Oton Sekar, like what kind of color. But in English, when would you say what kind of color? It's for talking about categories. Like you're talking about the dark greens or the dark blues, but it's not a specific color. It's not saying which color do you like or what color do you like. It's saying what kind of color, what type of color. So it, it could be different answer you'd get. Okay. 무슨 색이든 다 좋아요. I'm leaving this up for a bit just because I want it to be clear what I'm talking about. So to make this, what you want to first do is make a simple question. So it doesn't matter if... Um, Let me think of something else. It doesn't matter who did it. This is not in the lesson, but I want to add it because I want to help with your understanding. It doesn't matter who did it. In order to make a sentence like that, so it doesn't matter or it's okay who did it or whoever did it, it's okay. You first need to make the sentence, who did it? So how would you say that? Well, who would be nugu. In this case, it's who did it. So we're going to say nugu ka, but there is no nugu ka. It's nuga. Nuga right? Nuga soil. Who did it? Get the stem. Nuga hitunji. And then you finish the sentence. Sangwan soil. Or, you know, sangwan soil is just the most common. And that's it. What? kind of pizza do you like? What kind of pizza? So what kind of pizza is it? What kind of pizza is it? So now we're going to say it doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining. Welcome, Brian. So what kind of pizza is it? It's just 어떤 pizza예요? Or you can say, 무슨 pizza요? What pizza is it? Whatever you want to say first. So this is ida, right? So we get the stem. We can use tun or tunji. So I wrote this really weird, but you know what I'm trying to write. It's not part of the lesson. I'm not putting this in the abridged. 어떤 pizza이든지. Now, this is a little bit an advanced note, but whenever you have an e after a vowel, you can optionally remove it, but we're just going to keep it here. Keep things simple. So, 어떤 피자이든지 상관없어요. Or however you want to end the sentence. 다 좋아요. Like we had before. Or maybe, um, let's see. 상관없어요. 배고파요. 배고파, 너무 배고파서 뭐 먹어야겠어요. 뭐 먹어야 돼요. I have to eat something. Like it doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is. Anything you want to say after is, is doesn't really matter. Because you already have the feeling in this in this part of the sentence done. Let's do another one. Again, these are not sentences in the live stream. I'm just adding these. Um, when we meet. Okay, it doesn't matter when we meet. So, first you need to say, when do we meet? 언제 만나요? Right? 우리가, 우리는 언제 만나요? 우리가, 우리가 언제 만나요? However you want to say it. Let's just remove the, uh, the 우리. Let's just say it like this. 언제 만나요? When do we meet? So now we want to say, it doesn't matter. Whenever we meet. 언제 만나든지 상관없어요. And you're done. You just want to start with that basic piece of the sentence. So in the example with color, you would ask someone, what color is it? 무슨 색이에요? 무슨 색이다? 무슨 색이든지? That's it. That's how you make this form. I, I'm kind of trying to help so you can comprehend exactly what it is that we're doing with these sentences. Uh, for the other example that we had first, um, let's see here. 저는 지금 어떤 음식이든지 다 먹을 수 있어요. So for that, we also have, what kind of food is it? 어떤 음식이에요? Well, 어떤 음식이든지 
and then you finish the sentence. 상관없어요. 다 먹을 수 있어요. That's how this form works. Hopefully this clarifies it a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you want to change it, when it doesn't matter when we meet, uh, doesn't matter uh, who's meeting, we could do, sorry, I was writing Nugu twice. 누구를 만나요? Who are you meeting? Well now, 누, 누구를 만나든지, it doesn't matter who you're meeting. 누구를 만나든지 상관없어요. It doesn't matter who you're meeting. So first we have 누구를 만나요? Who are you meeting? You could say 누가 만나요, but that's who is meeting. So that would be a different meaning. What are you eating? 무엇을 먹어요? Now, mosser is not most common. You'd probably just say boy, but whatever. Let's just do 뭐 먹어요? 뭐 먹어요? Well, it doesn't matter what you're eating. 뭐 먹든지 상관없어요. Does this help? How are you going there? 어떻게 가요? How are you going there? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you go there. 어떻게 가든지 상관없어요. Does this make sense? Does this help? None of these are in the lesson. I'm just throwing this out there because I want to make sure you get it. But there are many other examples in the worksheet. There are 17 additional example sentences you might want to try as well. Okay. Yes, yes. 누구를 가르치든지 상관없어요. It doesn't matter who you're teaching. 그냥 가르치는 것을 좋아해요. I just like teaching. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to add one more example here. It doesn't matter what book you use. Make this sentence. It's not for the lesson today. I don't really care. We're going over. We already went over time. I don't really care. It doesn't matter what book you use. So how would you start making this sentence? Well, you're going to end it with 상관없어요 or whatever. Or you, you could say whatever book you use, they're all good. You can, you can say it different ways. Or, I just like books. Anything you want to say. But how, you're going to start it off. You're probably going to want to say, okay, well, how do I say it doesn't matter? Oh, 상관없어요. Okay. But then how do I say it doesn't matter what book you use? So that you're going to start it down. You're going to start the sentence by, you're maybe you're already writing, but for everyone who's still thinking, I'll let you know. You start the sentence by saying, what book do you use? Write it the most simple way you can. What book are you using? Or what book, yeah, what book did you use? Or what book do you use? What book are you using? Any way like that is fine. And then you're going to add 든지. And then you attach 상관없어요 or whatever, however you want to finish the sentence. It doesn't matter. Because it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you finish the sentence. 문장을 어떻게 마무리하는지도 well, actually, 하든지 there, since it's not an it's not an unknown thing. 어떻게 마무리 하든지 상관없어요. You could use 지 with 는지, but that would be like for 모르다 or 알다, since it's an unknown sort of concept. 무슨 책을 쓰든지 다 좋아요. Yes, Sophia? Let's see, Paulina, 무슨 책을 쓰든지 상관없어요. Yes, perfect. MJ Hammer, let's see, 무슨 책을 쓰든지, perfect. Evan, Yevon, 어떤 책이든지, nice. You, can, you don't even need to say what kind of book you use, just whatever kind of book it is. 무슨 책을 쓰든지, nice, Lexica. Okay, you got it, you got it. My members got it. Let me check everyone else really quick. 는지, 어떤 책을 쓰든지, nice. Oh, yeah, and Manu the Amazing had a good question in, in parentheses. Uh, I think you meant to say, 서도, so like even if you use, 무슨 책을 서도 상관없어요, that you can say it like that as well. That's a different nuance. It's saying even if you use whatever book, whatever book you use, it's okay. It doesn't mean, though, um, it doesn't really matter, though. It's just saying any book is okay. But it doesn't, imp it doesn't imply that feeling of any choice is okay, I don't care, that Tunji gives you. Someone said, looks aggressive. Yeah, it's not that it's ag aggressive. It's just more like dismissive. It's like, whatever. Like, I don't care. That sort of feeling. Like, it doesn't concern me. Get it out of here. <laughs> like, 
shoo. Like that kind of feeling you get. Not aggressively, but just like no interest. Iyongada? Uh, you could use Iyongada, but that's like saying it doesn't matter what book you utilize. Do you want to say utilize? Or like Sayonghada? Uh, Sayonghada would be a little bit more natural if you're picking between those because that one typically can get used to mean doesn't matter what check what check <laughs> what book you're using. Uh, but Iyongada would sound a little bit formal. I don't think you'd want to use it. Just Sida or Ikda for read or anything like that. Okay, nice. So um, you got it. Again, I'm not writing it up because it's not part of this lesson. I already went 20 minutes over the lesson explaining this, but hopefully that helps. Hopefully you kind of get a better idea for how this is used. I'm going to give you, I want you to write the final sentence. I was going to, I was prepared to write everything out and let you fill in the last bit. I think you can do this. Here's the sentence I want you to translate. Whether Young He did makeup or not, she's pretty. I'm just going to give you the verb. Hajang Hada. Hajang Hada is to do makeup. That's where you get Hajang Shi from, bathroom, literally makeup room. Hajang Hada or Hajang Hada is to do makeup. And our friend Young He. Spell it like this. <clears throat> so, whether young he, not does, but in this case, past tense. Whether young he did makeup or not. So, whether young he did makeup or didn't do makeup, she's pretty. This one is not using the question form though. I should have I should say that because I'm reading it again. I'm like, wait, no, this one doesn't use the question. You're not going to be using a question word in this one. This one uses the the two uh, sentence version. Whether young he did makeup or not, she's pretty. Okay, let's see here. Take care, Samantha. Okay, let's see. Sophia, Yongi ga hajanger, hittenji, an hittenji, yeppoyo? Yes! Yes! Perfect! Okay. Hajanger, hittenji, an hittenji, yeppoyo. Perfect, MJ. Paulina? Hajang hittenji? Oh, you would need to use it twice, though. So, uh, Paulina, whenever you have it with a question word, you don't need to use it twice. Like, duga, duga, hajanger, hittenji? Then you don't have to use it again. But if you're not using a question word in there, then you have to use it twice. So you do hetonji an hetonji, for example. Okay, now let me check some of the other replies now that I've checked my members. Brenda, yes. But you would want to use some sort of particle after young he, so maybe young he ga, for example. Yeah, boy, but the rest is good, Brenda. Okay, I'm just going to skim through these really quick. I'm reading them. I'm just not reading them out loud. Lauren, small typo for an, but I think you, I think you know that. Nice. Prachi, adding a she to be polite. Nice, nice. Okay. Yes. Very good. Awesome job. Um, I'm going to give you my answer, but it's the same as what most people got. You can use yongi ga or yongi nun. It doesn't really matter. It just has a different nuance. Actually, right a little bit. I'm still not even done with this lesson. I have another section. Okay. Young he nen. So young he. Hwajanger hada is to do makeup. Hwajanger hetunji. An hetunji. Sorry, I should say hetunji. I'll talk about that in a second though. I sounded like I said tunji, right? Hwajanger hetunji. An hetunji. Yet boyo. 
So whether she did makeup or not, literally whether she did makeup or whether she didn't do makeup, she's pretty. So Young Hee's pretty whether she did or didn't do makeup. Again, if you only take one thing from that, that part of the lesson, Dunji has the feeling of 상관없어요. It doesn't matter. It's okay. The cho like I'm, I'm okay with those choices. All right. So that is the intermediate part of our lesson. But I also have a bit of an advanced part because why not? <laughs> um, if you are not yet at the intermediate level, feel free to take notes on this. You'll want to know it for later. You might not find a lesson on it to be honest, but don't worry about this part. I don't want to cause you confusion. So just kind of, you can turn off your brain, take some notes and have fun. So this is people who, if you already know the ina form or kona form. This tunzi form is actually similar meaning to the ina form and the kona form. Now, ina is used after nouns and kona is used after a verb stem, but they have generally the same meaning. Tunzi has a similar meaning as both of these forms. However, it has a different nuance, as we already learned, and it has a different usage. If you're expressing that you don't really care, you don't have a preference, then you could use either. You could say, um, 언제나 전화하세요. 언제든지 전화하세요. Call me whenever. Call me whenever. You can say, um, let's see. Yeah, uh, anytime you're using it to say something like it doesn't matter, you can use either one. And if you're specifically using the verb ida, you can get idenji or ina. And when you're using these to say, um, like whatever it is, it doesn't matter, they have the same meaning and the same usage. So you could switch the sentence, 무슨 색이든 to 무슨 색이나 다 좋아요. However, Ina is not used when you're actually making a choice. Ina is simply used, as I've taught before in my lessons, when you're saying meh or something, meh or nothing. So you're not actually making your choice when you're using Ina. Like if you're saying, 저는 사과나 배를 먹고 싶어요. I want to eat like an apple or a pear. What you're not actually saying is, I want to eat an apple or I want to eat a pear, but I definitely want to eat one. No, you're saying, I want to eat something like that. Like maybe an apple or maybe a pear, or maybe I'll have something else completely. Like, I don't really care. That's not what tun means or tunzi. Tunzi is for you're actually making a choice. So if you're actually making a choice, you have to use tunzi. You cannot just switch it with ina. Um, ina shows that the speaker has no preference. So again, like, or something or nothing at all. I don't care. And ina can be used on its own without a second choice. 저는 사과나 먹을래요. 사과나 먹을래요. Like, I want to eat something like 사과나 뭐 먹을래요. I want to eat like an apple or something. But you can't say 사과든지 먹고 싶어요. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You have to use 든지 with a second form or with a question word. But 이나 can be used all on its own because it really just means this or whatever or nothing. It doesn't have that feeling of whether you do something or whether you do this or whether it doesn't have that feeling of making a choice. Since you're not making a choice, you don't have to present more than one option when you're using ina. Also, again, this is these are like advanced notes, so don't worry if these go over your head. Ina is not used with the past tense, whereas tunji can be. We saw it as a hadunji or hetunji. Ina is just used after a verb as well as kona. Hagona, like that, you're done. And, <laughs> sorry. Also, amu is not used with tunji. You could say amu na, or amu do, or amu, 
umsigina, amu, koshina, amugona, anything like that, but you can't use it together with tun, at least not in the same word. So you wouldn't say amu denji, like that. Okay. That was the that was just a quick note in case you're wondering about ina and tunji. You don't need to swap them though. You're not going to see them being swapped. Just if you sometimes see a sentence that has a similar meaning in Korean and you're like, "Well, what's the difference between ina or tunji?" That's really all you need to know. It's not a complicated topic though besides that. You're not going to you're most of the time though you're not going to be switching them. Most of the time you can't switch them, but sometimes there are situations where you're saying blah 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 it doesn't matter in which case you might see ina used instead okay one more note though this is for all levels one more note there is a different unrelated form that is tonji that is also used in the same way as tonji meaning it's attached after a verb stem ha tonji ha tonji this is not tunji. This is a unrelated separate form, but often gets confused with tunji because of the sound. So you might hear people pronouncing tunji as tonji. Just know that it's different. So if someone uses a form and they say tonji, ha tonji, they might actually mean tunji most of the time. So sometimes you might hear that. Just keep an eye out for it that some people might misuse tunji as tonji. Okay, that's the lesson. You survived. <laughs> you survived the lesson. Um, questions. I'm going to take questions for just about five minutes or so, and then we'll go. Maybe 10 minutes. I'll stay around for 10 minutes. That's That sounds better. Um, yeah, that was the lesson, though. Hopefully, you're able to follow along. Um, if you want to practice right now, you can feel free to try to give a sentence in the chat and I can take a look at it while I'm here. This is your chance to practice or say anything else you want. But the lesson's over. You did great. I was impressed. Let's see here. The pun potential. Which pun? <laughs> oh yeah, Paulina, take care. She said your brain is already snoring. Yes. Okay, a negative sentence like 누가 노력하든지 희망 없어요. Well, it's saying regardless whoever is trying, there's no hope. If you want to say that. Amu and 누구든지 든지 has the nuance of it doesn't matter. Any choice is okay. Versus Amu is just generally every single person, anyone. It doesn't have a feeling, it doesn't have that negative feeling of regard, like, I don't care. It's, it's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have that feeling. So you can say, Amu na harsi soyo. Dugu denji harsi soyo. You can say both, but they have different nuance. Amu is simply anyone, regardless of whoever it is. But it's not saying it doesn't matter who it is. It's just saying anyone, everyone, that sort of sense. I have a separate lesson also all about Amu, if you're curious, but there isn't any sort of nuance like that with Amu. And of course, you wouldn't be able to switch Dun with Amu with these other meanings either. Uh, but if you're curious, like uh, Amu Gona or Moshi Dunji, they both can mean anything. They just have different nuances. You could also use them together, but you wouldn't combine amu denji together, but you can use like moshi denji amu gona, like that. Like no matter what it is, I don't care. Everything, anything that if you want to add emphasis, you can use them together, but they don't have the same meaning. I mean, the same nuance. Even though they translate the same, they have different nuance. Okay, thank you. I always learn a lot. Thanks for coming, Evan. My grammar is far outstripping my vocabulary. That's good. That's totally fine. I would recommend practicing this form a few times to make sure that you can use it. Because, again, the most important thing about all of this that you're doing is just so that you can use it. And I, I only give you these like notes about like, oh, well, you can't use it like this, you can't use it like this, just to kind of help guide you. But at the very end of the day, 
you need to be developing your own sense of what feels right when using this form and how people normally use it around you. And the only way you can get that is really by using it and hearing it being used, not just by writing down notes, because you're going to forget these notes if you're not practicing. You know, you write them down, good, you got it. But unless you use it, you're just going to forget it in a couple months. So the most important thing is that you can actually make a sentence with this. Can you use Tunzi in a sentence? Any sentence. If it's only a couple sentences, that's fine. You'll use those same types of sentences and get good at it. Maybe like you feel comfortable only saying like, Busen, uh, umshigi den. Like you can say that. You're like, okay, I feel like like that's it. Busen umshigi den ta bogosu soyo. Ta char bogoyo. Like maybe you feel comfortable with that. Good. Use that. You'll get better at the other uses later. But at least then you'll, you'll remember it. Lexica, Mexed retracted. <laughs> I can't read what you said. Uh, Hannah says, it comes very naturally to speak out loud when you get comfortable with it. Yeah. So we can drop the G. Yes, you can drop the G. You can say Hadin or Hadin G. Most of the time it'll be used with G, but Tun is totally fine. We get some water. Hold on. Oh no, I bumped my desk. Oh, okay. <laughs> I bumped something. Gonna be doing, uh, I'm doing some more filming tomorrow. So I have my, um, my entire room I'm gonna be setting up for filming. I'm doing a few other, few, few fun videos coming up. <clears throat> Of course, you know I'm doing the uh, BTS series. This week will be the newest video. Will be uh, Guess the Member. That's coming up on Wednesday. Okay, let's see. Practice sentence. Busen Tegger. Ah, so whatever book you study is what you're trying to say. Busen Tegger Kongbu Hadunji. Peukwe. You'll learn whatever book you study. Typically, study would be used for like a thing that you're studying, so like a topic. But I understand what you're saying. You might, you could change it to like Musenteger, Sidenji, or Ikdenji, no matter what book you read. Uh, but yeah. Or maybe Musenteg, Uro, Kongbu Hadenji, like whatever book you study with. Yes, it is Yungi, Bin Yungi. Is there a dialect that drops the T? Not that I'm aware of. It wouldn't be a dialect usage to remove it. Uh, it's simply just more commonly used in the full form. Yes, it is Shuga. Shuga is this Wednesday. I know many people are looking forward to his video. It's very interesting. You will see uh, I, I found a lot of the same things that I've been reading online about him since making the video. Like, Billy, make sure you talk about this that, that uh, Shuga does. Like, yep, it's all in there and more. Let's see here. Something about using it in the future. Uh, that's you would not, if you're talking about Tunji, you would not use it in the future for a stem. So you wouldn't say like, Haget Tunji. Uh, they don't mean the same thing. The first one is like, I want to eat an apple or something, I guess. Maybe not. <laughs> it doesn't mean you want to eat an apple. It means you're thinking of eating something and you're like, well, how about an apple, for example? But it doesn't matter if it's not that. But if you say, I want to eat something like an apple. But that doesn't literally, that doesn't mean I want to eat something like an apple. It means literally I want to eat something that is like an apple. So like a uh, Fuji apple or maybe like what else is like an apple? Persimmon kind of? Uh, I don't know if that's like an apple. I don't know. Is there any other fruit that's like an apple? It doesn't. It sounds awkward. The second sentence is awkward. Evan says, I love the way Shuga talks. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know how he talks. We talk about that. I talk about his, uh, without spoiling it. Uh, actually, I don't want to spoil it, but you'll, you'll see. Also, I talk about the way he writes. 
He writes just like he speaks. You'll see. And uh, also a little bit about, you know, when he uses dialect and some tips for understanding him, stuff like that. Again, I've, I've already said too much. Can the sentence end in a future tense? The sentence can end in the future tense, but the verb stem won't with this form, tenji. Doesn't matter if Chersu goes tomorrow or doesn't. Perfect. Again, if you want to practice with this form, now is a great time. I can give you feedback. I can tell you if it makes sense or not. Um, if you can use this form in any of this any of the ways that I showed today, I shared three separate ways to use it. So using it with two, two, vor like two verbs, like two sections, like whether you do it or don't do it. I also showed how to use it with a question word just by itself, like mushidanji, the end. And then I also showed you how to use it with a question word, like whatever it is, musin or otan or duga or dugu or anything like that with tunji and then finishing the sentence. So of those three ways, if you can just use one of them, that's good. That's enough to keep it in your brain and use it for the other forms because it has the same feeling in all of those three uses. Uh, Rita, 무슨 책이든지 would be the only one. 책을 what because 못 is not a verb. So it cannot have a object. There's nothing that it's doing. It's just what is just what. So you can't what a book. So only the second one. 설거지, oh yeah, crestetic, you cannot use it in future tense, as I said. So you could say, 하든지. You could say, 하겠다고 하든지, like whoever says they will, but still the verb attached with 든지 has to be present tense. Or you can do past tense if you need to emphasize the past tense, but you usually don't. Joe Turner, Joe Turner stealthily stealthily listen to the entire live stream and just comes in comes in at the end and says thanks <laughs> i didn't know you were there hey joe whether i whether i take a taxi or i can't take a taxi it doesn't matter but i can't go it doesn't quite make sense because remember it has the feeling of either choice is okay. But if you're saying whether you take a taxi or you can't take a taxi, it's okay, but you can't go. It's like, what? It, that's, that's the disconnect there. So if you remove the at the end, that's fine how to start a sentence. You can taxi tadanji, botadanji, fine. You're good up to that point. But the end has to be something that finishes that thought of either choice is okay. Not that necessarily they're going 100%. You could word the sentence to say something like that, but the feeling you get immediately when you hear tunji is it's okay. That's a good choice. Sure. That sort of feeling. Maddie, I should really watch. It's okay. I'll upload a uh, bridge video, but I would say, I would say, yeah, you can skim these notes again, but just get the worksheet. I knew, I know it costs a dollar on Patreon, but sometimes the worksheets are like just 10 sentences and they're not that big of a deal. Sometimes they're gigantic. This one is gigantic. There are 17 extra sentences, different uses of this form. And uh, if you see it used a lot and you can make one sentence on your own, I think you've got it. Just make sure you can make one sentence on your own that uses any of the uses and that you understand it and that you feel confident in making that kind of sentence again. And you're going to be fine. 뭘 해보든지 안 해보든지 오히려 계속 까먹어요. No matter what I do or what I don't do, I keep for... I'm not quite sure of the meaning of that first part, though. Maybe you're trying to say no matter how I study. Whether I get a taxi or not,
you might want to say 택시를 타든지 안 택시를 타든지 뭘 타든지 어떻게 좀 해요 어떻게 좀 와요 like no matter whether you're taking a taxi or not it doesn't matter just come is what you could say that's how you could express something like that 무슨 음식을 먹든지 저녁을 먹을 것이다 no matter what kind of food I eat doesn't matter 저녁을 먹을 것 I'm going to eat some dinner 저녁을 먹을 거예요 or 거야 or something like that Typically, 거시다 would be like a narrative style. That would be like the plain form. You might use that on like a test or an essay or something like that. But speaking is going to be 거에요 or 거야 or something like that. 나가든지 안 나가든지 맘대로 해. Whether you leave or you don't leave, it doesn't matter. 맘대로 해. Do whatever you want. Perfect. Perfect sentence. Okay. Uh, I think that's good. I don't want to go too long. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, I will see you again on Sunday. Make sure to do the vote. We'll have a vote going up tomorrow for the next topic on Sunday. It's probably going to be another intermediate lesson. Hopefully, I can see you there. Take care, and I will see you next time. Krum? Krum? Tamitoba.